you've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This episode is brought to you by Close for Cairo, Cairo Sushi, Black Diamond Club, Pure Cairo Notes, Move Well University, the Cairo Dex app, and Alok Trivedi. Let's hustle. All right, guys, welcome to today's episode of Cairo Hustle. I'm your co-host, Luke Millette, and here's your host, Jim Chester, to tell you about our guest. Hey, everyone. Today's guest is Dr. Blake Kalkstein, and he will teach you how to get 10 million views with YouTube marketing. Stay tuned. All right, so Dr. Blake, tell us your chiropractic story. What, what got you into the chiropractic world in the first place? Yeah, so um, uh, some people may know this, some people don't, but I practice with my father. He's been a chiropractor for over 30 years. And um, when I was in high school and I was graduating and going to college, I kind of really didn't have a clear goal or um, what I wanted to be when I grew up type thing. I thought I would do psychology or do law enforcement um, or do a combination of the two or some something like that. And... Uh, and um, what what I ended up doing was just kind of bouncing around schools and bouncing around uh, where I wanted to be as a as a profession, what I wanted to get into. And um, to be fair, I I party too much and I didn't go to class and I kind of flunked out my first school I went to. And my dad was like, "That's not going to fly." He's a he's a, a Navy graduate. He's been in practice for you know at that point probably 20, 20 plus years. And he's like, you're going to come work for me until you get things figured out. And I was like, oh, okay, uh, whatever, Dad. <laughs> and uh, and I started, I came to work for him. In the beginning, I was just showing up. Like, I was a, I think I was a bad son at that point. I would show up, and I would, um, I'd been, been out to like, 3 in the morning the night before, and, I like, work starts at 7, and I'd be, like, sleeping in the basement instead of changing the laundry. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I think my dad's view of me has changed over the years. But I was a bad son. I didn't really know what I was doing. And, you know, one day I woke up and I realized um, this is not how I wanted to leave, live my life, that, that kind of lifestyle. I really wanted to make a difference. So I was kind of put on the path. I started working out again and taking better care of myself and getting a good night's sleep and kind of not hanging out with the friends that um, pushed me towards more of a distracted lifestyle than the lifestyle I wanted to lead. And at the same time, I started to see that my dad was actually smart. Um, he was actually kind. He was actually caring. He actually knew what he was doing. Actually, and I and and, and um, you guys may understand, and listeners may understand. When uh, when you're growing up, you see your dad in a certain light, right? You know, he's your father. You know, he works hard. He, he takes care of the family. He's a loving spouse. He takes care of your siblings, but you don't see him as like professional. Uh, and like at, at some point, I saw him as professional. And I was like, wow, he really helps people. I mean, like I've seen people crawl in and walk out of his office or, you know, everyone's so happy to be there, even though they're in pain. And his staff are really amazing. They, they really look up to him as a person. And I was like, God, I kind of want that. That's really cool. And um, one day I was doing some research and, I, you know, I was finding out if chiropractic was right for me. And I came to him and I said, Dad, I think I want to be a chiropractor. And he goes, that's good. That's great. That's exciting. He didn't really push me towards it. I just kind of saw what the profession can do for people, and uh, and I saw that my dad was actually a very talented chiropractor, a talented business person. And I said, yeah, I kind of would. I would love to follow. Be honored to follow my father's footsteps. So um, I looked at chiropractic schools. Um, I still needed to complete my bachelor's degree, so I I went into Towson uh, with an associate's degree already under my belt. And I finished my bachelor's in kinesiology, which should have taken me two years. I did it in a year and a half. I was just really motivated to get finished. And I chose Logan because they have a master's in sports, the sports medicine, sports rehab program. And I finished my chiropractic degree program and right afterwards my master's in sports rehab. Uh, and I've been practicing with my dad ever since and it's been a blessing. Well, you know, you telling us your story really resonates with me because, you, you know, I, I had a little trouble my first year in college as well. And I think it's not uncommon for people that are uh, young and undeveloped to go into a uh, professional mode and not know what they're really doing. And, 
you know, it's kind of like the track of life. You get thrust into this idea that, oh gosh, I have to go get some higher education and I'm going to party too. And, you know, you have so many influences because you're still trying to find your, your grounding of who you actually are and build your identity. So it's really easy to get stuck in those ruts of, you know, I'm going to be the party guy and I'm going to, you know, I don't want to miss out on these moments of this, but I'm not going to study. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, that, that was me for sure. Uh, yeah. And I think everyone at some point can relate that. We all we all don't grow up at 18. Sometimes it takes us a couple of years. Uh, one of the fun things of being a chiropractor is mentoring, you know, young athletes as they come in and uh, uh, and talking with parents and so and so is not getting it or my daughter hasn't figured it out. He was like, hey, it took me two years to figure it out. You know, I didn't graduate college till I was 23, so um, it definitely took me a couple of years to kind of get get my life figured out. Yeah, I can resonate with that too. You know, I, I finished. I, I did five years of school before I got my uh, degree in marketing and journalism back in 02. And I finished at 22 years old too. So, you know, some of the people that do the greatest work in this world, I mean, it, it's it's hard to say, but, you know, we all come from different walks of life and we all come from different paths. And, you know, just as long as you're out there doing your best on a day to day and you figure it out eventually, I think that's a really uh, impactful thing. Yeah, it's awesome. That's a good point. So moving on, do you have any mantras or quotes or words of wisdom that resonate with you personally as a doctor? You know, um, I'm a big fan of Kevin Christie and um, his chiropractic group, the Modern Marketing Chiropractic Group, and I I really kind of got exposed to um, propelling my business. I joined a mastermind group about two years Oh my God, it's been three years ago now. And uh, it was marketed to us as a, um, how to uh, hire an associate and have them take care of your office and you just work on growing your office. That was the premise of the marketing group, uh, of of the mastermind group. And what it ended up being was an introduction, like a crash course in marketing. Uh, and so I, you know, I was reading Dan Kennedy and, 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 and Dan and looking, reading Dan Sullivan and, and reading kind of all those books that kind of gets you pushed to the path of marketing and how to grow your practice. And I kind of, we kind of went into this, my dad and I went to it together and we kind of went into this, uh, this mastermind group as dad, I think this would be good, you know, cause you want to train me to be your associate and, and, um, and, uh, you know, you can maybe take less work less and, um, and I really kind of just dove headfirst into the marketing uh, and really kind of use that to uh, to grow our practice significantly in the last three years. Um, and one of those mantras, one of those things that helps me with my momentum, um, I think there's two things. Um, all the marketing that we do in our office, all the marketing that we help doctors with uh, through our ChiroSpark program is we want to, and this is, Kevin says this a lot, and I think this is um, is very true, is we want to build no like and trust in our community uh, through our advertising or through our marketing or through our practice. Uh, and so that's the one thing that I like to do is, and that's big in our YouTube channel, that's big in our marketing that we do in our office is build no like and trust. That's a big mantra that kind of is in the back of my head. If I'm doing this, are people going to know me? Are they going to like me? Are they going to trust me? Are they going to want to use our office for services? Are they going to, are they a chiropractor? Are they going to use ChiroSpark as a goal to help them, um, a goal to help them uh, achieve their goals in chiropractic. So that's my first mantra that I really like. And the other, it's not really a mantra, but uh, it's something I think that se- separates successful people from unsuccessful people, and that is execution. Uh, even if you're going to fail, even if you're going to struggle, even if you're going to, you're not going to get the results you want. The fact that you pulled the trigger and you executed. It is leaps and bounds of what other people are doing when it comes to making excuses or, or doing that. And I, that's the one thing that I've always done on this is someone said, you should jump into video. I was like, okay, I'm going to execute. I'll do a video a day for our office. Um, we wanted to get Kyrospark up and running in, in two months. I got to record a bunch of videos about what we're doing well in the office done. I'm going to spend up, you know, I'll work, I'll execute, I'll get it done for you. We're running a new marketing program in the office. We're taking care of a lot of patients. And I said, I'm going to commit to something. It's this execution. It's just, getting it done uh, when when I know maybe the person out there, they're not getting it done. Maybe they have a great idea, but they're not executing on it. So those are the two value, the two, you know, two true values that I live by when it comes to uh, my momentum, my commitment to, to my patients and to fellow chiropractors. 
Well, first, I want to say thanks for sharing that because I think a lot of people are going to benefit from, you know, the idea that if you just keep on going after it, you'll eventually figure out if it's right for you or if it's not for you. But if you do figure out that it is for you, now you're putting your momentum in the right place. So with that, I had the next question for you is, what is your specialty with YouTube and Kairospark? Would you mind sharing with our audience what, you, what you're doing with your marketing? Absolutely. Um, and uh, so let's go back, uh, let's time travel events, go back in time. When we first joined that mastermind group, um, we were taught, you know, the very crash course in basic and marketing, direct mail marketing, email marketing, video testimonials, YouTube, Facebook, all of that. It was, it was spread out over about a year and a half where we met quarterly. And I kind of just dove headfirst into it. And my dad was very generous. He said, you know, Blake, um, I, I'm, you know, I mean, he's in his 60s. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to be doing the, the, the YouTube. I'm not going to do the Facebook. Just dive in, go after it and, you know, be reasonable what you want to spend and that sort of thing. But, you know, you kind of have a free reign to kind of learn the systems, to learn the systems, get it in place. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. Um, and so uh, we started Facebook marketing and we started a YouTube channel and we kind of, kind of put those two different, you know, they were side by side. There were two different things that we were working on, but they both had a very similar goal, which was to bring new patients into our office. And um, so if we go, let's start with Facebook marketing because I, it, when I first started doing it, I was terrible at it. I, uh, uh, I was just trying to absorb as much knowledge as I could. I was executing, but may, and my results weren't as where I wanted them to be, but I was still doing it. I was still, putting myself out there. I was still trying to learn and absorb um, different Facebook marketing strategies, um, how to use click funnels, how to use email marketing, autoresponders, all that fun stuff. And um, I was actually using lead pages back then, but we switched to click funnels, just found it a little easier to use. Um, we were doing uh, drip camp, drip email campaigns, running ads for drip email campaigns, all that stuff. And um, w frankly, we weren't successful um, from a cost efficient standpoint. I would say I would spend 800 to a thousand dollars a month and I would see two to four new patients from my marketing efforts. And that was going on for about six months. You know, I would, I would learn something. I would implement it. I wouldn't see the results I wanted to see, but I wouldn't get discouraged. I mean, I would get discouraged a little bit, but I would kind of go back to the drawing board and reevaluate where I'm going. But the key was I just kept kind of plugging away at it. Like you said, I kept trying to figure out cause I knew something was there that I was missing. And, um, and fast forward to uh, uh, this time, 2016, last year this time, maybe a little October, uh, August or September. And, um, you know, I wanted to kind of push back into some more lead generation and more content driven marketing. And um, I, I reached out to uh, a community of marketers. And I said, does anybody have experience working with chiropractors? Um, I, I feel like I'm on the edge of something and I just want to get your impact. And I hooked up with these two great guys, Justin and Mark. And um, with their, 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 they had never worked with chiropractors, but they have ran successful marketing businesses. Um, they're, they're both members of a, a membership site. Uh, they have over 700 members for this program that they've started from the ground up. Uh, and, and that's worked really well. And, and they've done incredible marketing things with a couple different products. And I said, we, we just connected. We, we hit it off. Well, I, I brought my ideas from chiropractic and marketing and I brought their ideas from business and marketing and we connected. And I think we, we figured it out pretty quickly that we had, we were onto something and we started seeing, um, I'd still spend $600 in marketing on Facebook, but I'd see 25 new patients. I'd see 30 new patients. We'd scale, we'd test, we'd, we'd gather data, we'd run numbers, we'd execute. And we ended up seeing, I think our Facebook numbers went from like, we had 17 the first month we did it and then it was like 24. And then in October we saw something like 33 new patients from Facebook. Um, and then that's kind of been continuing since then as we've test, we refined it. And we were on, we said we were onto something and we said, you know, this should be something chiropractors, if they want to do, should be able to do um, efficiently and, and affordably. Um, so we developed Kyrospark, which is we distill everything that's working in our office from a Facebook marketing standpoint, and we present it to chiropractors to learn for themselves. It's it's not a done for you service. It's we want to teach chiropractors, we want to empower them to learn the successful marketing strategies that we're using in our office, um, and we want it to be affordable. We want it to be a no brainer for chiropractors. We want it to be 
uh, come on board, learn the material, get it up and running. Um, we're here for to support you. Uh, and we wanted the cost to be, I think it's $147 a month to uh, have access to all the modules. And it's, it's Facebook, it's Instagram. There's a YouTube module out there. There's email marketing. There's just a ton of stuff on there. You know, at the time, and I think still currently, you're seeing marketing agencies advertise to chiropractors to run their Facebook ads. And I'm hearing costs a thousand dollars a month, fifteen hundred dollars a month. I've seen it up to twenty five hundred dollars a month for someone to run your ads for you. That's expensive, especially for someone who's struggling or a new chiropractor right out of the gate. Um, that's really expensive, and I think there's a really efficient way to to bring new patients into your office with Facebook marketing. That's where ChiroSpark has evolved, and we've been we're crushing it this year. We're doing fantastic, rolling into. Um, the end of the year and it's been a lot of fun to help a lot of doctors grow their practice significantly with ChiroSpark. So that's that's the first thing. That's where kind of my that's my Facebook social media journey and how ChiroSpark evolved out of that. And then uh, you know the YouTube thing has just been execution. Uh, putting videos out there, knowing that if you go back to some of my first videos with YouTube, there's probably like 17, 112, not a lot of views on there. But I didn't get discouraged. I just continued to execute, and um, we've uh, we've have over thirty five thousand subscribers. We're almost to ten million views. I've had um, I've had a view a video go viral through Facebook that's got over twenty million views across all the platforms. Um, we do three videos a week in the office, building like, know, and trust. Uh, I would say we see upwards of thirty to forty new patients a month just from I saw you on YouTube. I knew you were the guy to come help me, or I knew your office was the guy to come help the, the office to help me. And we we've, we've really built a, a strong following on YouTube, and that's been fun. And and, and recently we we've distilled down what works really well for our YouTube um, in our office to grow new patients, and we've shared that with ChiroSpark too as well. So that's another way, another avenue I think doctors could get into if if that's the avenue they want to go into too. Um, build like, know, and trust with their community. So my follow-up question to all that amazing information you just shared with us is, how have you seen Facebook change over the past couple of years? And uh, also you touched on YouTube. How have you seen that change? And I, I know you mentioned how you've distilled the information that you've been learning, but how have those platforms changed and how have you learned to change with them? Yeah, so, um, Facebook's always a fun one because it's always changing. There's new platforms. The back end is always, I mean, every three months or it feels like there's an, a new layout on the back ads platform. And um, so I, I, what I think Facebook has done is, is really um, tried hard to gather as much as the appropriate data as they can to make chiropractors uh, and any business who's going to be doing any marketing on Facebook to be very targeted and very detailed about who their ideal customer is. And um, we're really fun, Dean's seen some really fun stuff with the audience insights and what Facebook is able to tell us about who our current patient is or who is buying our current product, which is our chiropractic office. Um, and so that's been really neat. We've, we've recently uploaded, I think, over, over 6,000 emails we've collected over the years. And Facebook can tell us of those emails who are associated with Facebook what their age is, what their demographic, if they're homeowners, if they're renters, if they're married, single, divorced, widowed. If uh, what their hobbies are, you know, all, which is kind of scary a little bit when I think about it, but there's a ton of data on there that we can say, here's who our current client is or our current customer. Let's create a custom audience that targets just those people when we run our current ads because we know who um, who who benefits from uh, the services we provide. So that's how I've seen um, I've seen Facebook change, and it's kind of almost been for the better because it's it gives us a more detailed targeted audience to go after. And then um, and then as far as YouTube is concerned, um, to be honest, I haven't really been paying much attention. I just put videos on there. Um, I put the right keywords, the right tags. I make sure my SEO is good. I upload, um, I upload the transcripts so I get good SEO rankings on my videos. I haven't really been paying attention to much as that as a platform to and how the platform itself has changed. I'm just getting the job done. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, I, I, I feel like, honestly, Facebook changes like every other week. And, uh, you know, people have a challenge with getting ads approved sometimes. And people have a challenge with uh, 
picking the right demographics and dialing all that in. I know that it's a pretty uh, robust system to start to get into. And that's something I wanted to touch on with you next is I jumped onto your website twice now. And how does somebody get in there and how does somebody begin and how does somebody utilize that properly and make their time more most efficient using the, the Cairo Spark website? So uh, Cairo Spark that's a great question, Jim. I think Kyrospark is really broken down into three, um, three awesome components. The first component is like that over-the-shoulder training. Um, uh, we take you step by step through every process you need to do to get Facebook ads up and running, and then how to retarget, how to build split tests, um, how to transport that to Instagram, that sort of thing. And then there's also the YouTube module, things on to do on there. Uh, we really do a nice job of kind of guiding you through where to start um, and where to finish. The second component of, uh, of Kyrospark, which I'm so proud of, uh, even maybe more proud of the product, than, is, the, is the technical support we provide. Um, we, we provide agency level support for our doctors, uh, so, you know, f- without the cost of that. Um, we want you to succeed. We want you to do well using our programs. And so we're there for you guys 24 um, seven. If, you, if you're on our website, you see that drift message pop up. If you throw a question in there, within 24 hours, we're answering it. If you're still getting stuck, we'll throw up a, we'll do a remote login and we'll kind of walk you through what's going on. If you're still getting stuck, I'll log into your ClickFunnels and find out what's not working. If you're not getting the right SEO or if you're not getting the right tags or if it's not, whatever's not working. If you have a specific custom problem, like we had a, uh, one of our clients wanted to uh, run, run ads and um, the, if the patient signed up for the appointment on a weekend, she wanted to pre, prepay them. And so we kind of figured it out. You know, Calendly has a really cool feature right now where you can, um, you can have them prepay for their visit if they sign up through Calendly. And so we've kind of worked it out through them, but we, you know, we take excellent care of our clients as they come through and getting them set up with their ads. And that's what I'm really, really proud of. The third component is we have a private Facebook group where we're able to encourage uh, encourage growth among amongst our uh, our clients. It's another platform for the people to get help on, and it's just a ni- nice way to stay in touch and see people succeed. So, if you're a Kyrospark member, the first part is just jump into that over the shoulder platform, watch that a couple times, and then if you have any, you know have any questions, reach out to us. But as you're watching through it, maybe your second or third time. It's so easy. You can just get things up and running right away, and we have people get ads running within a week watching stuff like that. So that's the best place is start there and then stay in touch with us because we're here to help you succeed. You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This episode is brought to you by Close for Cairo, Cairo Sushi, Black Diamond Club, Pure Cairo Notes, Move Well University, the Cairo Dex app, and Alok Trevetti. Let's hustle. So what would chiropractors be able to accomplish if more of them knew about Cairo Spark and all the assistance that you give them with marketing? You know, um, I always say if I knew how to do the Facebook marketing that I do now and the YouTube marketing that I do now three years ago when I first figured out that I came into practice, our office would be exponentially bigger or better or or have better outcome measures, whatever your outcome measure may be. Um, and I want the, every doctor to have that same level of success that we're having in our office. If, you're, if you define success by how many new patients you see or, or, or uh, whatever your you know, whatever your outcome measure is for your office, be it new patients, be it revenue generated, be it um, time away from your practice, but still generating new patients. Um, that's what I want every doctor to have. And I think if every doctor knew how to do social media marketing the right way, in an efficient way, and they didn't have to pay a fortune to learn how to do it, they could be as successful as they wanted to be seeing patients. And, uh, you know, I would really love to be in, you know, I, I think when we first came out of school, and I know a lot of docs do this, is my weekends, my Saturday mornings were doing spinal screening clinics or, I mean, I worked five days a week and then on Saturdays, um, you know, I would, 
I would go out and do a screening or I would go out and do a run, run injury clinic. I would go to a race and have be hands on for race stuff like that. Uh, it, and being my sports medicine background, that, that was fun to do, but it killed a whole Saturday or a whole Saturday morning or a Sunday, sometimes a whole weekend if we were out of town. So, um, I'm talking with you guys right now. I've had two emails come in. I've already had signed up two people with Facebook. So I'm able to do some more things. I'm able to spend more time with my family. Um, I'm able to relax on the weekends because I work hard during the week and my marketing is still working for me. So I want those doctors to have that same level of success bringing new patients into their office. And I think that's what Chiropractor can do for them. And my follow-up to that, Blake, is why do you think that most chiropractors really struggle with uh, practice growth? You know, um, I think a lot of it has to do with um, with schools. Uh, you know, at least uh, Logan did an excellent job preparing me clinically. Uh, I think they could have done a little bit better preparing me to help acquire new patients or help business growth, business development. Um, you know, there's so many resources out there right now that I'm being exposed to now that we're, we're kind of in the business development game. Um, or, or practice growth or even just within our own practice and being exposed to all these different ideals. Um, you know, none of that was brought to our attention when we were in school. And I'd love to see, uh, you know, a, a goal of mine in the future would be to be having, like, I, I want to be a Tri-10 module for students to take, not as an elective, but as a mandatory about social media marketing. I want to be in all the schools and go down and, and give, you know, a, a two-day weekend crash course in marketing that I, distilling down what we've worked really well in our office, what works really well in Kyrospark, and making that available to all students when they come out of the practice. So as soon as they open their doors and they throw that shingle on the, on, on the wall, they can start seeing patients. They can start generating, uh, building like, know, and trust in their community, start bringing new patients into their office. Um, that, that's where I really would love to see Kyrospark go in the future um, with, with what we're doing when it comes to accomplishing social media marketing goals for our office. So I, I really think this is the schools. We owe it on the schools to give us a better opportunity to, to for business development, for business growth. I think it'd be really cool to see something like strategic coach on a school level, like something like that. Where you know, strategic coach is awesome. I think we're looking up to sign up next year, um, and that's a 10k investment, right? No student has that coming out of the gate. Um, can we take something like that and put it in the schools and make it mandatory across the board? So when students come out of practice or out of school, they're ready to jump into practice and start helping people. So talking about the future, where do you see chiropractic in 20 years? You know, that's a really, a really a tough question. Um, if we look at where we were 20 years ago, it's 2017, so 97 early 90s, you know, late 80s, early 90s, that was like the golden age of chiropractic. You know, they called it the Mercedes 80s because everyone was, you know, billing insurance and they were paying 100%. Um, it, it's been a decline since then from re- from insurance reimbursement. It's been more oversight, which I think is a, a good thing. Um, what I really would love to see in 20 years is with doctors like Bobby Maybe and the Forward Thinking Chiropractic Alliance, evidence-based chiropractic, um, smart ethical marketing um uh chiropractors rising uh good chiropractors that are honest that are ethical rising above the rest and and uh and pushing the profession in that way um that's where i'd love to see it honestly i don't know where it's going to be in 20 years what what i'll know is i'm going to keep grinding i'm going to keep learning i'm going to keep uh trying to change the practice and for and the community uh and, and chiropractic in a positive direction um I always try to say, um, I always try to influence the people immediately around me because I know if I influence them, they'll influence people around them in a positive way. Uh, And and so that's what I want to start doing. I'm going to start influencing the people around me in the chiropractic community, and hopefully we can get a good reaction out of all that. So let's talk a little bit more about marketing and how you developed into who you are. Um, I know you said that you really got into it starting to kind of like grind it out and just like, well, put it on my plate. I'm going to do it. Put it on my plate. I'm going to figure this out. Um, What are some key marketing strategies that you couldn't do without with uh, growing your practice and possibly, like you just mentioned, the future of chiropractic? So, uh, great question. Um, 
key marketing strategies I cannot do without is um, is every quarter I meet with my father and we discuss where the practice wants to go. So having an accountability buddy or a mastermind group to be a part of, I think has been invaluable, invaluable to where I uh, where I am now and where I think the, the future of, of chiropractic is going to be. You know, if I never went to that mastermind group two, three years ago with my dad, I'd probably still be, you know, we'd probably be content seeing 70 new patients a month uh, and, and working our tails off. Um, you know, right now we're, we're pushing 200 new patients a month. I think we, we um, and I, I have my weekends off. You know, they're going to, that's going to change because I'm going to start doing more travel, more speaking engagements, but I think it's changing for, in a different direction for the better. So, the mastermind group, the accountability buddy, the groups, the Facebook groups like Kevin Christie's uh, Modern Chiropractic Group, uh, all of those are key strategies that I employ uh, quarterly or daily to make sure I'm on the right track. Um, another marketing strategy I think is always invest in yourself, um, always trying to learn, always trying to read or, or just not being content with where I am. I, I want to do better, always want to do better. Like you said, put it on my plate, I'll execute it. Put it on my plate, I'll do it. So I'm constantly putting things on my plate, and I'm doing them. And if, and if they're they're successful, I'm sharing them with the community. If they're not successful, I'm going back to the drawing board and figuring out what's going on. So, um, uh, uh, a pod, listen to podcasts, listen to audio books instead of the radio when I'm driving. You know, trying to read as much as I can. Um, so those are the, the when it comes to marketing strategies, I think those three things that I just mentioned, the, the accountability, a mastermind group, and then it's just always trying to ed- educate yourself is really what's pushing me to be better than I am. So speaking of podcasts and things that you read and things like that, what what are some of your favorites? What are, what are, what are the things that you find yourself reading and listening to constantly? So I always go, um, I always go back to the, uh, the 10X uh, podcast with Joe Polish and Dan Sullivan. That's always like, you listen to two of those and you're like, yes, I wanna do whatever they're saying, let's do it. I wanna walk into on Monday and like, just get, just go to town on what we're, <laughs> what, uh, whatever it is that's on my plate the next day. So that's always gets the fire under my, uh, under my, um, uh, under me to get me going here. As far as reading is concerned, um, or listen to podcasts or, or another audiobook, uh, I, I always go back to, um, Think and Grow Rich. That's on my current uh, audiobook right now. Um, I got persuasion lined up. Um, you know, just the psychology of marketing, uh, the social sciences of marketing. Um, that's always fan- fascinating to me. And just to see how things tick and what you know, why are people doing things that have been doing this for so long? Uh, that's always uh, fun to read. Another great, um, uh, a great podcast. Nicole has a great podcast from Nicole uh, Colley. Um, her podcast is always fun to listen to. I like Chris Burfield, uh, his podcast slash Facebook page live group. His is always fun. Uh, got a, got a shout out to the host here, Jim, your, your podcast is always something I listen to. So, you know, depending on where my mood is, that's where I go with, with the podcasts. Um, and then reading, you know, always challenge yourself, always, you know, read good nonfiction, you know, I'll throw in a, a fiction every once in a while, but, um, Business development, psychology, social sciences, um, marketing strategy. That's where I, I, I get enjoyment out of. Um, I, I think I just ordered Tim Ferriss's new book, uh, The Tools of the Titans. Looking forward to reading that. One of my favorite books from last year was The Code of the Extraordinary Mind. That was really eye opening. Uh, and it was a great, I, I listened to it on audiobook and it was really, really, uh, it encouraged me to. Uh, to plan for my future um, and really just, you know, have small goals, but have big goals too. Um, that was a fantastic book. The, another really great book that I, I encourage people to do is an audio book versus reading it was, um, is, uh, oh, I'm drawing a blank. Let me uh, look it up for you guys real quick. But it's with Jocko Willink, um, the, uh, the seal. Yeah, I, I've, heard, I've heard of the book. Um, I, I, I know that you're uh, on, on a pause right now trying to find that, but I wanted to just ask you a quick question to maybe make this transition a little easier on us is, uh, based on audio and based on reading, um, how much of time of your day do you devote to that? Uh, uh, I read at night for about 15 minutes uh, before I go to bed. Um, and then um, 
And then my commute to work before and after my commute to work is either a podcast or an audiobook. So, uh, and then if I have to do any long drives, um, my wife and I actually, my wife and I listen to audiobooks frequently in the car. We look at uh, relationship development. We look, listen to, um, you know, just different. You know, I think we listen to um, to books about uh, about science and about nature, and um, just kind of ex- expanding our mind. Even if it doesn't have to be business related uh, or, or, or personal or relationship developed, the book's called Extreme Ownership um, with Jocko Willink. That's uh, you, you got to listen to it on audiobook to hear them tell the stories about when they're overseas and then coming back and how they apply it to, to business. It was just a fascinating lesson and it, and, and it, uh, I executed on that tremendously. So that's a great one. The uh, extreme ownership. So what's your favorite app or piece of technology to keep you engaged with your audience? So I, I mentioned this earlier in the podcast, um, in the interview, um, Calendly has been fantastic for um, for our office and with the Kyrspark um, clients. To having to be able to schedule online, if you're even if your website doesn't offer online scheduling, have a link to where they can schedule online um, has been has been great. And I use it for um, I use it for when I'm signing up for new patients. I use it when um, I do strategy calls with all our clients and, and demos with uh, any new clients that want to come on board. I really like to talk to them. I like to interview them, find out what's going on with them. So I use Calendly to, <clears throat> to schedule a bunch of different, <clears throat> a bunch of different events. So that's been a really fun kind of app tool that we use in our office and that we use in, um, with Kyrospark as well. So, uh, that's, that's the fun one that I've been using a lot. So with Calendly, um, I know that that's a pretty cool thing, but does that integrate with your EHR? It doesn't. Um, it, it doesn't integrate with our EHR that we use. And we're using um, Cairo Touch in our office. But what we do is every morning, um, our staff member pulls up a, Zap, uh, a Google spreadsheet that's uh, downloaded the night before, all the new patients that have signed up the night before. And she goes in and enters, um, enters the new patients. I'm, I got to give a shout out to our office. Our office is really, really efficient at processing new patients uh, to the point where we'll see 12 to 15 new patients a day easily. Um, and we really have got the, the machine oiled very well down here. So if I have three new patients or four new patients that sign up the night before, I can efficiently add them to um, add them to our day and not be worried about it. Yeah, that's really cool, man. And, you know, I don't know if I told you this earlier off of uh, the interview, but I worked in an office for five and a half years. So I know what it means to get a, a, an appreciation and a shout out from the clinic leader. And I know that you're probably not the main leader because your dad's been there and he's been doing his thing for around 30 years, you said. So what is your introduction and your, uh, you know, your your addition to the office done for him as a clinician? Well, I think it's kept him fresh, you know. Um, I think it's kept him uh, abreast with uh, with where things are going now. Um, you see this a lot, and, and my dad's confessed this to me. You know, sometimes you just get stagnant. You're doing well, uh, and you're and you continue to do well, and, and sometimes it's good to have a, a young buck in the in the group to kind of push you forward a little bit. So I think um, I think he's enjoyed having me on for that reason. Um, our practices, uh, when I came on board, we were happy seeing, I think we were seeing 50 new patients a month, I think that, or 45, that was a busy month for us. Uh, as I said earlier, you know, September we did 183 new patients, October, uh, October just ended, I don't know what our numbers are at, but um, I think it's coming in, you know, around that 170, 180 mark. So we've really almost doubled what we're doing, doubled, tripled what we're doing in the office as far as when it comes to the new patients we're seeing, uh, patient visits we're seeing. So. Um, that's been fantastic. I think that's my dad's enjoyed that aspect of it as well. He's working harder than he has in a while. Um, I think he's. Uh, I don't know if he's getting ready to slow down. They all, uh, people always said chiropractors never retire; they just kind of adjust until they can't adjust anymore. Um, and I think my dad may be in that boat. Um, he just is a hard worker, really hard worker. And uh, the other thing that I think that that he's enjoyed having us on board is that. Uh, I practice what I preach. Um, the marketing I'm doing in the office is the marketing I share with my clients in Kyrospark. Uh, the health advice I give my patients is the health advice that I follow myself. So uh, 
you know, we're working on the office. We've really built out an office to be a more rehab, uh, you know, advanced corrective exercises. And we encourage our staff to exercise with us. And my dad's out there doing his exercises right now while I'm talking with you guys. We usually use our lunch break. So he's, I think he's been in the best shape of his in the last 20 years just from us working out the last couple of years together. So that's been fun working out with him too. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Well, we're getting to the end of our show for the day. Is there anything that you wanted to talk about that we didn't ask you? Um, no, you guys really hit on it well. I really uh, thought we talked a lot of um, um, a lot of different avenues we went through. My story, that was really fun. And, you know, sometimes I don't get to talk about myself a lot, which is, I guess, a good and a bad thing. Um, you know, I, I want to encourage doctors out there. Uh, when it comes to social media marketing, I think there's, uh, there's a lot of different uh, avenues to go about acquiring new patients. And I think that's important because when I look at social media marketing, I think of it as like a, um, I'm casting nets into a stream to attract, to attract new patients. And there's a lot of, if I can, there's a lot of different nets you can, you can cast out there to attract new patients. And I think with social media marketing, when it comes down to, uh, using Facebook, using YouTube, using some of these other big platforms to marketing, you can cast a quite a few different number of nets. Um, and, uh, you know, with YouTube, you know, I encourage docs to start at YouTube because it's content creation, it's building like, know, and trust. And if you can do that, the other marketing streams, uh, putting offers out there or doing content retargeting marketing, um, is a lot easier because you've already got a solid foundation of, of video because video content's where it's at right now. Um, uh, so, you know, I encourage docs, if you have any questions about YouTube, uh, you can reach out to me. Um, I, I think uh, I, I give away my YouTube module on Kyrospark for free. So, Jim, I'll get you a link for that. You can put that in the show notes. If, that's where I encourage docs to start, content creation. I think that's very valuable. I think it's where it's at right now. And you can really jump off that platform going in other directions. So that's the last thing I wanted to say. Well, this is the part of the show where you give all of your uh, – all the contact info and links and plugs that you want people to – know so they can find you better so if you have any other links you know this is the this is the moment for that yeah so um what i really like to shout out is um if, if docs are encouraged that want to work with me what i like to do is go over a demo slash strategy call with them and that's how i find out if kyra spark's a good fit for them and if they're a good fit for kyra spark uh i really try to figure out what their goals are for getting into the social media marketing realm where they want to see achievement where they want to see success and I want to find out if Kyrospark A is a good fit for them, and B, if it's not a good fit for them, I want to push them in the direction of where I think they'd get the most success for what they're doing. And so if docs, what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a demo strategy call in the show notes. If docs want to work with me, if they think Kyrospark might be a good fit for them, I encourage them is to set up a strategy call with me, set up a demo call with me. Let's go over what their individual goals are uh, when it comes to getting into this social media world, getting into YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that fun stuff. Um, and let's try to find out what works for work, works well for you. And if it's Kyrospark, that's fantastic. That's what we're here for. But if it's not, I want to push you in the right direction of somewhere where you can achieve success. Uh, and so we'll throw that, um, let's start there. I think that's a good place there. If you want to find me, I'm on Facebook. Um, if you want to go to our website, uh, kyrospark.com, that's where you can find me there too as well. So let's, let's leave it with those couple things. All right. Well, that's the end of our show for the day. And I want to thank you, Dr. Blake, for being our guest today. It, it, uh, Jim and Luke, it's been a pleasure having being on here. It has been fantastic. Um, you guys have some great questions. Uh, really think, you really made me think on a couple of them. i got to go back and revisit that. Where, where are we going to be in 20 years question? Maybe I'll come back with an essay in a couple of weeks. <laughs> well, you know, I think it would be a good uh, blog post for the chiropractic world to, to get some insight from uh, your perspective on that question as well. Um, but, yeah, I do want to say thank you so much, Dr. Blake, for uh, being our guest uh, on the Cairo Hustle podcast and sharing your uh, wisdom and, do you know, how you've uh, bootstrapped up to where you are for uh, getting, you know, what do you say, something like 10 million views on uh, YouTube and that there and it's and just that one thing is a huge accomplishment. So uh, kudos to you for uh, driving so hard and learning these platforms and helping more people. Yes, it's been awesome. Thank you guys so much for having me. Thank you, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Will do. Bye. 
Thanks for listening to Cairo Hustle. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.